Hi, peoples. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, hi to you two. I'm not talking to you. You just, shh. yeah, you just go back to sleep. There you go. That's a good boy. You just crochet. It's freaking cold. Should I play some music? It's always so freaking quiet. Okay, I'm gonna play some like background music. I hope you guys don't mind. I don't even know if you'll be able to hear it, but I need something or else I'll feel awkward. Yeehaw, okay. Woo! <laughs> hey, queen. <laughs> I freaking love that. I'm gonna start saying that. <laughs> Oh, hi everybody. Thanks for joining me. I know I like never really announced when I do these. Ogly says hi. These are always like really last minute just when I can like find a moment to actually come on here. Wow, this is like not the best setup. I have my ring light, so I look hella oily, but I promise I like just wash my face. I think I'm just lotion-y. Right now I'm working on a new tutorial for you guys. I was actually trying, I don't know why, I was trying so hard to like power through this because I wanted to finish this before I came on the live. And then it's like taking a lot longer than I thought. So I thought I would just sit down and work on it with you guys. I kind of was like, I wanted to knit something on the live stream today. Unrealistic expectation. Y'all know me doing too much, way too much. But I freaking, I've been loving this yarn. It's so stunning. I know this lighting does not really do it justice, especially because I'm not using my recording camera. I'm just using like my, my, my built-in webcam, whatever for this. Christina, thank you. Wow. You guys are giving me confidence. I don't, I think I mentioned this like a couple of live chats ago, but like long story short, so off topic, but I was like, or I have been like really struggling with acne. I've had acne so bad since like eighth grade. I am 27 years old and like just never goes away. I always have a hard time. So for like almost, it's like a month and a half. Almost two months, I've been using that Curology stuff and it looks a lot better. I don't have to like put on makeup just to come onto like a live chat. So thank you for saying that. I know my hair is so long right now and I've mentioned it before. Oh my God, my hair is disgusting. <laughs> Look how long it is. I really, I'm so, who's there? <laughs> Sorry, someone just drove past my house, but I kind of like really want to cut my hair, like do something with it. I don't know. I said this before and I'll say it again, but if I hit 100K, I will cut my hair on my own, live stream it, film a video. I don't know. I want to cut off like all my hair. I'm just so tired of it. It's so heavy, it takes so long to dry and then style. Your girl just ain't got time for that. I'd rather crochet. But let's see. I don't think anybody's really asked me, but I'm going to tell y'all anyways. I'm currently using, this is the Noel, Noel yarn from Universal Yarn. And this is so gorgeous. They gifted this to me a couple months back. And I knew what I wanted to use with it because I only have one skein of this. So I'm currently whipping up a headband ear warmer tutorial for you guys right now. I recorded like half of it already, but I freaking love this stuff. It's so stunning. Um, in case y'all are like interested in checking out this Noel yarn in like all of my videos, if you hit the description link, I do have the link for this yarn in all of my descriptions. It is an affiliate link just off the bat, just let y'all know. So in case you guys, just click on it and happen to purchase something from Universal Yarn. I will get like a really small percentage commission from it. 
Um, but I thought I'd just like let you guys know so you don't go into it blind. Of course, you don't have to like buy anything, but I just thought I'd recommend this because this stuff, oh my gosh, I wish I had my other camera. But when you guys see this tutorial, look, my face just behind the yarn. Just like, I love how some parts have like kind of a peachy, pinky, magenta-y kind of colorway. And then some other parts like, oh my God, can you guys see that? This right here is like really pinky and rose. And then over here, you've got like deeper magenta and purple. And then the whole freaking thing has like metallic copper glitter in it. So that's what I'm using to make, oh my God, just look at this, make this like headband. Y'all, I'm obsessed. So I was actually going to use this yarn to make a headband and give it as like a gift to a family member of mine. Um, <laughs> but I think I might keep it for myself. I hate saying that because I'm so behind on gift giving. I wanted to make, this is like, y'all know, y'all are crocheters and knitters. You guys know the struggle. You want to make, hand make something for like everybody that you know. And then it's just so time consuming. And then I've also been just trying to like film and keep up with like the videos and everything. I'm not like stressed out or anything with the workload, but I've just been so busy working that I haven't made all my gifts yet. So I was going to gift this one. Oh my God, it's so cute. <laughs> why do I look like somebody in the hospital? <laughs> Tell me why I look like I'm <laughs> going to be like committed or something. So cute. I think I need to add one more row to this. I got a small head, guys. I don't know. I might finish up. I might be done after this row. I don't know. I don't want to add too many. Hmm. Don't know. What do y'all think? Should I go for the thicker earworm look? Or should I stop here? But yeah, I've um I I like using this yarn. Because it's so different from the stuff that I normally pick out for myself. Like when I had this sponsorship video with Universal, they did let me pick out what yarn I wanted. And obviously like getting it in person is so different than just seeing it online. But if I can remember correctly, this yarn, you guys can see it's like pretty fuzzy. This yarn is 26% baby alpaca, 26% merino wool. 21% polyester or nylon and then like 19% something else I don't remember the thing is over there but I'm not going to get up but yeah I like this yarn because for once I'm actually you know using different textures of yarn you guys know I usually go for like 100% acrylic or 100% cotton or sometimes it'll just be like a really basic mix of wool and polyester or wool and acrylic. But this stuff is cool because I'm pretty sure with the baby alpaca and the merino wool, it's going to actually keep my head really warm. I mean, acrylic already keeps me warm, but I know that wool helps to like regulate your heat. And I was like talking shit on California where I live like the last few weeks because even though it's already like the middle of December pretty much up until today it has literally been 75 almost 80 degrees every single day I shit you guys not it's been that warm like just yesterday I was wearing shorts and I went outside to run some errands and I was like driving around and I had the windows down. And when the sun was hitting me, I was sweating. I was like, I cannot believe it's like the second week of December and I'm still sweating. Like I'm outside and it's hot. And then this morning I woke up and I heard like little pitter patters outside and I was like, oh shit, here it comes. And sure enough, it was raining. It's still raining and it's been raining all day. So I don't know how long, is this a stitch? I don't know how long it's going to last. 
you know, the rain and the cold weather and all. But I really hope that it does because I was like talking so much crap saying how it's, yeah, there we go. Damn it, I skipped a stitch like three rows back. I cannot believe I'm making rookie mistakes right now. And I did that off camera, y'all. Well, oh guys, I cannot believe I'm doing this. Y'all see that stitch I dropped? Right there. Right freaking there. But I caught it. I saved it. I'm just going to ignore that drop stitch. Cannot believe I did that. I don't really want to redo it. <laughs> I'm dead. I don't think I don't think I have the confidence to film to film the intro and the outro with this headband. Y'all see that? Did y'all just see how hospital patient I looked? I can't believe it. <laughs> if I see any if I see any mean comments in this section, I will delete you. <laughs> I swear to God. I don't know like how this looks on me. Maybe it's because I don't have my hair done and like an outfit, but it's not looking so cute on me. But I think I can't even look at myself in the camera right now. I think this might be done. So we're at lower. What do y'all think? Should I add one more row or is that going to be too thick for my head? Huh. Dilemma, dilemma. I might add one more. I think I'm going to add one more. Why am I whispering? Okay, let me read some of these comments. Sorry, guys. I've just been rousting myself. <sighs> oh, thank you for saying I would look good with some short hair. I want to say the last time I like cut off all my hair like that, I was in high school and I cut it to like, just, no, I cut it above my shoulder and I like it. I just know I'm going to go through that phase of like, there's going to be days where I miss having the long hair because I'm going to miss being able to style it and look all mermaid like. So I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do it. I know I do at least like want to trim it. Like I probably do need to cut it off to like my boob or something. Because it's just so, like, ratty. Ugh. Ugh. Somebody said this ball would be so nice to squish. Let me just give you, like, a little. There's no ASMR, I'm sorry, but just visual SMR. VSMR, not audio. Oh, yeah. This stuff is so nice. I love it. Jasmine, are you planning to make a crochet gris? I'm going to just cancel myself right now. Are you planning to make a crochet Christmas gift ideas video? I can. I thought about it. And I didn't have too many people asking for it or recommending it. So I didn't know if I should. I know there's a couple other crochet or knit people that I watch on YouTube. And they did it. So... And I actually watched like half the video and a lot of the things that they recommended were things that I wanted to recommend. So I didn't want to like recreate the video and like essentially jack or like copy all of their ideas, but I'm down. Um, definitely down. A lot of the things that I would tell you guys to make for Christmas, if it's like Christmas or crochet gift ideas, I'll probably make it so that everything is like searchable. Um, like there's already a video for it on YouTube. I don't want to like recommend something and there's like no tutorial on it. Um, but yeah, guys, let me know here or like even comment on this video. Let me know if you want me to put together like a Christmas gift idea. And then let me know if you want it to just be like a gift idea or if you specifically want it to be like crochet ideas. Juliana, thank you. You said you can keep it if you want. You already sell so many of your projects. You deserve to keep what you want. I know. I I think it's just because I don't have many like beautiful luxury, awesome looking yarns that I was like, somebody has to like get use out of this. But I think I'm gonna keep this one for myself. Maybe. You know what? I might have enough 
if I stop here or just add one more row, I might have enough to make a second headband and then actually give it away. But I think I want to give it to either Jordan's mom or my mom. The only thing is I don't know if my mom would wear like pink, but. Sorry guys, I'm like so quiet just reading your comments. You think one more row would be a good idea too? Hi Erin, my name is Logan. Hi vlog, vlogging, vlogging or vlogging with Logan? <laughs> Christina, this yarn is a different breed. Yeah, definitely. I've usually like the yarns I pick out, they only have like two, two different materials mixed in. And this thing literally had four different things. It was the baby alpaca, merino wool, some percent of polyester and then I don't know what the I can't remember what the other one is right now but there was like four things I was like god damn that's it's a lot of mixture there Franca you were just oh shoot my thing just scrolled up you said you were just watching my yarn recommendations video holy moly there's 50 people here watching me Ooh, <laughs> nervous <laughs> no I'm kidding <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you guys liked the yarn recommendations video. I got a lot of like DMs and people asking me, sorry, my back is itchy. I got a lot of people asking me to do more yarn recommendations because the last time I only went to, where did I go? Hobby Lobby. I don't go there anymore. We're not going to talk about that. And then where else did I go? I went to Joann's. Love Joann's. But there are a handful of things that Michaels carries that Joann's doesn't, which is why I wanted to go back there. But yeah, I hope you guys got some helpful tips. Um, it was so funny. Like before I went out to get errands, I was like reading my comments and like responding. And some people, it it's funny. Like when I get like sassy or like negative comments, I don't, I don't like, it doesn't like hurt my feelings. Maybe it should. Maybe if it was like really personal, I'd get upset. But um, I guess why I wanted to mention that this yarn, that my link for this yarn is an affiliate link is because somebody commented on the yarn recommendations video and she said um like this is ridiculous you need to state when you have you like you need to state when you're sponsored and you're affiliated um like I can't believe you didn't do that for this video it was just a yarn recommendations video and to clarify if you're watching this video and anybody else who's wondering the video that I just put up today of the yarn recommendations video is not sponsored and none of the yarns that I recommended there are affiliate yarns like I'm not in any affiliate programs with craft smart or line brand or loops and thread yeah I don't I'm not sponsored by anybody there I just wanted to recommend kind of just my favorite really affordable yarns because I'm like really frugal. Like I said it in the video, but like I'm really cautious with my money. Like don't get it wrong. There are a lot of yarns that I have splurged on in the past. Um, but day to day, month to month, I'm really, really careful like with what I spend my money on. And whenever I go to Joann's and Michael's, I always use a coupon. Like I have the Michael's app and the Joann's app and there's always some kind of coupon. So I'm always using coupons. I like, I, I don't know, it's probably like so my parents raised me they were like pretty frugal with money and now like I have a hard time spending money so the first thing I think about is like is there a deal can I get this for a dollar off like anything but yeah that video is not sponsored not affiliated um I genuinely really like the loops and thread impeccable yarn and the craft smart yarn granted it's not you know super merino wool it's just acrylic um but when it comes to getting pretty good quality for a really good price, I would always recommend those two. In the past, I have used Craftsmart. And for the most part, I didn't use it like in a lot of my tutorials and stuff because I didn't think that their yarns were very comfortable. And then about a year ago, and then more recently, I was helping some friends out with like picking out yarn. And they wanted the Craftsmart and I was like, oh, what's this? And I was like touching it. I was like, oh my God, Craftsmart's kind of like changed how they're making. I don't know how they do it, but they've stepped up their quality game. 
So really, really affordable. Um, like not everybody can afford to shell out, you know, 20 bucks for a alpaca super merino wool skein of yarn. And it's only going to get you like 200 yards. Trust me, I get that. Like I hesitate. I'm, I'm with you guys. I don't normally want to do that. I think the only times I really am down to like spend money on something like that is either for a tutorial so that you guys can see what I'm using or if I'm going to be giving it like as a gift. Um, yeah. So yeah, good prices, really good stuff. Oh, a lot of people are saying that y'all think this is done. I can't see like when I'm looking at it just like this, it doesn't, it looks like so small, but I guess because I have a little infant head, it looks done, don't it? Don't she? You know what? I think I might just stop there. Easy enough. Easy enough. I think I've recorded, I think I've recorded three videos this week or four. Crazy. You're crocheting a crop top right now and it feels like we're crocheting together and it's nice. I love that. Yeah, so that's my whole goal with these is like, I've said it before. Oh my God. Uh, I've said it before, but whenever I'm like not actually recording, I always throw on like my favorite people on YouTube and I watch them and I like to listen to them talk and it feels like you're with friends. Oh, can we get a hi, Bubby? I know your papa's coming home. He's coming home. Look at that face. How do you not want to just eat this face? Ugh, what a puppy. Hello, 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 people. I got so many highs. Wow, 64 people here. Oh my gosh. Somebody is crocheting a raglan sweater right now. Hell yeah. Are you using my tutorial or are you using somebody else's? That's cool. I'm just curious. I've gotten so many DMs from people in the last couple days showing me their recreation of the raglan top-down sweater. Somebody, a couple people sent me a sweater all in one color. And I love like how simple it was because you can actually wear that like every single day out and about. And then some other people showed me like their multi-color sweaters, but they're like fally, wintery kind of colors. The urge to not make a new sweater right now. So hard. Oh, you guys like the crochet Christmas gift idea video. Okay, I can do that. Christine, you said Vlogmas, I know. So I thought about it. I did think about, oh my God, 70 people. I'm gonna lose my shit right now. I did think about doing Vlogmas, but I don't know. I, I thought about it for a little bit, but I kind of just thought, I don't know, there's a couple different reasons I chose not to. I think for the sake of my mental health, I couldn't do it, um, at least not right now. Um, yeah, I, I won't go into it, but it's just, you guys know, like vlogs means you're filming every single day, which I pretty much do as it is. But that means you're, you know, you're filming from essentially the moment you wake up till getting ready for bedtime. And then you still have to edit that whole video and upload it and then do it all again every single day, like every single day in a row. I feel like that's a lot for me. I don't mind filming and doing all that kind of work. Even when it comes to editing, I can be pretty quick on editing. But in case y'all didn't know, every time I upload a video that's about 12 to 15 minutes long, I guess wherever I live with my Wi-Fi, it does take me two and a half hours to three hours just to upload the video from my computer onto my YouTube studio. And that's just like with a 12 minute video. I think a couple days ago or like last week I was uploading, it was like that 28 minute long business video. And then the other day I uploaded like a 25 minute video and those took 
four, four hours and some change just to upload. So I think if I had better upload times, it would help. I know a year ago, y'all would not believe it. When I started my channel, like tangent, when I started my channel, um, we did not have good Wi-Fi. Like it was even worse than the one I had now. Uploading a less than 10 minute video when I first started my channel took 12 hours. And that's not even a joke. I'm not exaggerating. The first few videos that I had up on my channel took so long to upload to the point where I had to sit by my computer all day and literally every 10 minutes I'd have to wake it up or play a video or something. That way my computer would stay awake because the little thing at the bottom of my upload thing literally said 10 hours and 30 minutes. And it would take all day. Like I'd start uploading at like 10 in the morning and it wouldn't finish until eight or nine o'clock at night. Not even a joke. So I want to say like eight or nine months ago, we upgraded the Wi-Fi. Like we got a better package. It's a lot faster, but you guys know the upload speed is different from the download speeds, so like watching Netflix and like streaming my video. Those are download speeds. But if you're trying to upload something to the internet, that's like a different speed. And even though it's upgraded, it still takes a long time. So long story short, I feel like Vlogmas is kind of like not in my best interest because I would literally be spending all night watching my computer upload a video. And I feel like my computer would die and I kind of don't want to like abuse it like that. So trust me, I did think about it. I like the idea. I really do. At the same time, I also was kind of worried like, I don't think my life is that interesting that I can, I don't think I'd be able to entertain you guys for 30 days straight. Like I think half the videos you'd be like, what did we just watch? You've been working on the same project for four videos in a row and all you did was play with your dog and crochet. I don't know. I'm definitely down next year. I know this time next year I will be moved out of this house and into hopefully my own place because I don't have my own place. But um, yeah, I'm hoping wherever I end up moving to and I'll let y'all know what's going on when it happens. But I'm hoping by then I will have different upload speed, you know, different company in general. And I would love next year. I really would like to film a vlogmas. I feel like that'd be really fun. Sorry. I'm sorry guys. I'm like reading comments. I'm like also watching like kids outside my house, just making sure they don't do anything funny. Look at my dog guys. Is that not an angel boy? <laughs> Somebody said, uh-oh, not the yarn police. That's right. The yarn police came after me and I wasn't having any of it. It's not sponsored. I would tell y'all as per FTC guidelines, every time I upload a video, I have to disclose whether it's sponsored or not, either visually or verbally. So if a video is sponsored, I will literally say video is sponsored. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. Anahi, you said, even if it was sponsored, we trust in your taste in yarn. Why, oh, thank you. Thank you. I know everybody has really different tastes. So, you know, not everybody's going to like the yarn that I recommend because some people hate acrylic and that's totally fine. Like, I think it's just that's what I've been so used to that I already know how to like work with it. I'm okay with the texture of it. Impeccable, Brittany, you said impeccable by Loops and Fret. Loops and Threads is your new favorite yarn. I got a bunch of different ones the other day at Michael's. Hell yeah. Shop those deals. I really like Impeccable. I They couldn't like been on and off my radar for years. Um, Yeah, they've been around for years, right? Impeccable, that line. But definitely like as of recent, every time I go to the store, I touch the Impeccable yarn and I'm like, I can't believe this stuff is like this good. If you guys remember the crochet poncho DIY, that men's poncho that I put out, that whole thing was done with impeccable yarns. I probably should have mentioned that in the video. But yeah, that entire thing was made with loops and thread impeccable yarn. And 
the person that commissioned me for it, he's actually my tattoo artist. And I saw him, I want to say like a month ago, and he brought it up and I was asking him, you know, how is the thing holding up? Has it been, you know, fraying on you? Anything like that? Has it been stretching out on you? And he's like, no, it's great. I've washed it a handful of times. And he's like, I honestly wear it like all day, every single day. Um, he wears it after he goes surfing to keep him warm. And then he was also saying like when he's at home, just hanging out with his kids and stuff, he just wears it kind of like, um, what, what do they call those things? Like a muumu? Is that what it's called? He's like, I kind of wear it like a muumu, just like around the house. I'll watch movies with the kids in it. I'll play games in it. He's like, I wear it all day to the point that my wife is like, yo, when are you going to take off the muumu? So it's been holding up really well for him. And again, that was a whole like sweater. Christina, you said you're crocheting a Godzilla order. What in the world is that? Sue Q, is your big, is your big cartel store your official store? You were... Does that mean like wondering, curious? Yeah, um, my my online shop that I link pretty much in every single description box, that is the storefront that I have been using ever since I opened up a storefront. So I created my store at the very end of December last year. Jordan helped me set it up. I was really nervous, but that's crazy. I've actually had that online store up for a year now. But um just up until that video came out. And even now, I, I pay for my own subscription, even though they did sponsor that one video for me. This whole time, they weren't sponsoring me. I found them, chose them, liked them. Um, so yeah, it is Big Cartel. If you guys go to any of my description links and just want to like look at it, whether you want to get something from me or you want to make your own store, just click the Big Cartel link in my description. But I really genuinely like I know a lot of people use, there's a couple different ones. There's actually like such a huge handful. Um, Jordan, my boyfriend for his website, he actually uses Squarespace because he had that website before he met me, but he really likes Squarespace. They do charge more than Big Cartel does like every month, but I know that there's a lot more customization that he can do with that. Um, I think just like more fonts, he can literally drag and drop where he wants pictures to go fonts to go he can change so much um but yeah I, I really like big cartel if that's what you were asking trying to make your own store but yeah my online shop is by big cartel it's that is the what do they call it like a storefront and then I make my storefront on them Sorry, it's like so quiet. I'm just reading. Puppy hears the kids outside and he don't like it. He said, get off my property. I feel you, puppy. I do. Funny thing about Mowgli is that, um, so Mowgli, as, as good of a boy as he is, when the front door is open, he's one of those dogs that likes to book it. He's a, he's a bad little boy. And then if he sees, he likes little kids, but if he sees like another dog, Mowgli's harmless. He's never bit or attacked another dog, but he definitely has the little man syndrome, the Napoleon complex where he's just like so little that he's like easily intimidated. So if like I open the door for him, he's like going pee like in the front yard and he sees like a dog on the leash walking like five houses down, he will book it. He'll book it at the door, run all the way across the street, go down to the other houses just to confront the dog. And then once, once he gets there, like, to the other dog, he'll just, like, be, like, looking at him, like, barking and, like, challenging them. Kind of like, let's play, let's go. But yeah, this one. He's one of those that will, like, run and, like, look back at you like, ha, 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 it's a game. And you're like, bro, there's cars coming. It ain't a game. <laughs> so he just hears people and he hears dogs and cars and... Trust me, he wants to book it right now. Whoa, hi from Greece. That's so cool. There were some other people saying, was there somebody from Uruguay? I missed them earlier. Oh, Brazil and Portugal, New Zealand. Hi, 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 that's so cool. I love, I love hearing that I can like reach so many different people. Sorry y'all if I'm taking, 
so long to like get to your messages. I promise I'm sitting here reading. I just, y'all know me. You know I ramble. Don't come here if you can't handle the ramble. Should that be my new merch? I should tell y'all about that. Hold on. Let me read some. Let me read some. Somebody, Emily said, I'm crocheting a Santa hat every time I make one and someone sees it, they ask, they ask for one in another color and you're on your fifth one. See, that's like the good and the bad thing about being like a, a fiber arts hand crafter is like, obviously what we make is really cool. It's one of a kind. It's unique, handmade. It's not store bought. And like, you want to be recognized for like for what you make. But a lot of times people can't just be like, and it's not a bad thing, but like a lot of times people, if they see you wearing something and they're like close to you, they know you well enough. They'll be like, oh my God, that sweater is so pretty. Oh wait, you made that? Oh, can you make me one? And then you're like, huh. uh, yeah, maybe. And it's like, I don't know. A lot of times people don't realize just how much work goes into it, how long it takes. Um, it's like a little bit intrusive for them to like say that. I would say definitely... Not that you should be in it for the money, but if that many people are really asking you to make this, make sure that they are paying you what you're worth. I hope that you're not just making like 10 hats and just giving them out for free. Granted, if that's something that you want to do, go for it. But if it's kind of get to the point where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm making so many of these and people just keep expecting it from me, make sure that you get what you deserve. If you're making it for them, I hope that they are compensating you fairly. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to catch up here. Susan's Art World. Oh, I remember you, Susan. I like hearing about other crocheters' experiences while I'm crocheting. I'm making a Christmas throw for my neighbor. She reminds me of my granny. Oh, that's so cute. Um, sorry, you said Christmas throw. Okay, so I have a video I recorded yesterday. I literally recorded two yesterday. Crazy. Um, long story short. My grandma, she knows I crochet. And for like an early Christmas gift, she went through her house and gathered up all of her really old crochet and knitting materials. And my great grandmother was actually the one who got my grandma into crocheting and knitting and stuff. Um, so a lot of the things that she gave me were actually my great grandma's. And I never got to meet my great grandma because she passed away long before I was born. But yeah, long story short, my grandma gave me all of these items that she used to use when she crocheted. She still crochets, but she like handed me down all of these things. And inside of like this huge basket of stuff, there's a really old catalog. I think it's like a Sears catalog from 1980. Literally 40 plus years old, a 1980s crochet catalog. So cool. Anyways, when you said Christmas throw. I was thumbing through this really old catalog and they had like a bunch of pictures of what are they called? Tree skirts. And I die. It's so cute. I'm editing the video right now. So when that goes up, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I don't know if I have time to like make a tree skirt by the end of the year because I have so many other DIYs and stuff planned for you guys. And also I'm still after I finish up a couple other tutorials, I am going to finally assemble all of your guys' squares. Trust me, I still have them. It is in the works. I just wanted to get out like really easy tutorials first before I dive into like such a huge project. What's that on my lip? But yeah, in the catalog, there's so many cute like Christmas themed ideas, like different Christmas ornaments. Like they literally had like the three wise men crocheted as ornaments. They had tree skirts handmade crocheted gorgeous I thought it'd be so cool so maybe by next year like early I can get some like tree skirt tutorials out to you guys and you guys can like decorate your whole house with like crochet stuff that'd be so cool Sue you said is your big cartel store your official oh you said this or do you have one with more products Whatever link I have in my description, that is my only big cartel store. I only have one online stop, only have one online shop 
the Days to Baker Cartel. And whatever you see is what I currently have. I had a bunch of stuff on there that I took down about a couple weeks ago because I did sell off a bunch of my creations. And at the same time, um, there was just a bunch of stuff that I had for like custom orders that I don't really want to, I don't have a lot of joy making. There's a couple crop tops and stuff that I've made custom order before, but there's just other things that I want to focus on putting up on my website. So I took down some of the previous um, product listings that I had before. I do still have, I want to say at least 75% of the items up on my page. So there's still a lot of stuff there. Um, I still have my crochet beanies on there. I still have those crochet booty shorts. Um, what else? I think I'll, I can probably add these headbands because they're, they're pretty quick to work up. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, but the reason why I took down so many things is I didn't want to have literally 50 listings. I know with the account that I have on Big Cartel, I can list up to 50 products at one time. But I think for me, I don't I don't like the look of that. I don't literally want to fill my shop with 50 different customizable items. That's a lot of work to put on my plate. That's a lot of different patterns to kind of have at my disposal. I think I would rather have you know, 15 or 20 items listed in my shop at one time instead of literally filling it up to the brim. It's just not my style. And again, this will change, you know, as the months go, I'll take away some stuff and put on some new stuff. Yeah, the main reason why I took away, uh, another reason why I took away some of the things on my shop and I have just less items right now is, I've said it a lot of times, but I do plan on listing a lot of my one-of-a-kind items. That's kind of something I'm really starting to get into. Um, I still like customizing certain things like beanies, really simple things for you guys, but I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I've said it so many times. I don't really know how to explain it right now, but I just really like, oh, who's texting me? Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Um, keep playing. I just want, I don't know. I really just love the idea of making one of a kind items and then selling those versus selling you know, a hundred of the same crop tops. Don't get me wrong. I still want to do that again with certain items like the beanies and whatnot. I think it's just so fun to have unique and like rare items. Like, um, I did just get product shots in the mohair sweater and product shots in that blue raglan sweater that you guys saw me make. Sorry. There's like alpaca everywhere. So those will be up on my website, but I think I want to mix my website half and half. I want half of the things to be simple, things that you can order from me for a pretty affordable price. And then I want to have listings of my unique one of a kind items. So yeah, if you're seeing less items, it's because I removed some, but there are still like 70% of the things on my site. I know you guys are saying Vlogmas and I know you guys are saying, uh, Brittany said no pressure for Vlogmas. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to put a lot on my plate in the sense of signing up to do Vlogmas. I think it'd be really disappointing if I was able to keep up with it for a week and then I just fell off. Um, yeah, definitely something, definitely something I'm looking into for next year. I, I can probably agree that I will be willing to do it next year, but for now, I just want to stick to like my more like informative informative quality content in the sense of I'm really able to teach you something new every video or teach you show you something new that I'm working on every video versus having four days straight of a video of me in my room working on the same sweater or the same beanie you know so yeah sorry I'm sorry guys to let you down trust me I really I thought about it I really did but there's a lot of other knitters and crochets out there who are doing Vlogmas, so you guys can watch that. <laughs> Lemon Eyes. Hello, so happy to stumble upon your live. I'm trying to figure out a nightmare sweater, like a nightmare before Christmas. That'd be really cool. I don't even know how you do that. Hello from Greece. That's so cool. Oh, 
Okay, I don't know how to say your name. Porto? I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Don't, I can't even say it right. Uh, he said, hi, thank you so much for the repost on your Insta story yesterday. It made my day 10 times better. I'm so glad I could brighten up your day. Yeah, a lot of times if I, if people like make a, a Instagram post or a story post and they tag me in it, if I see it, like I'll repost it. The only thing is if people are like DMing me a photo of their work, that's a lot of times like when I don't because you're not posting that to the public. So I don't want to like screenshot your stuff and then blast it on my social media because I didn't really get that permission. But yeah, if you, if you guys are like actually tagging me in your posts or tagging me in your stories, I'll repost your stuff. <laughs> Via, that's so funny. Via, Vea. Hi, Vea, Via. Hi, I recognize your name. You said no because when I saw that, when I saw that comment in your video claiming you were sponsored, I was like, nah, Aaron would never. <laughs> yeah, I would never. Like I said before, um, it's literally, it's literally part of YouTube's guidelines where if I am, if I am paid, or I don't think gifted, but if, if you're literally sponsored for a video, you either have to visually on the screen type it, announce it, or verbally announce that the video is sponsored. Um, so you guys have seen, like in the past, I've been sponsored by Skillshare and Dossier. Um, you guys remember I had a We Are Knitters. They didn't pay me. They didn't sponsor me. They just gifted me some items. So there, I, I don't even think I said it was sponsored. I just said it's in collaboration. So if you guys see that on my channel, if I say it's sponsored, it's sponsored. If I say it's in collaboration, that means I wasn't paid to say anything. They didn't give me a script or anything. Usually if it's in collaboration, that means that they gifted me something for free. So I just want to mention their items. So yeah, the We Are Knitters one, that was not sponsored. Um, where are some other sponsors I've done? The big cartel, obviously, you guys see me. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. What 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 do I have to like keep that information from you? Like, what purpose does that serve? You guys saw if you guys watched that uh, small business video, I did say, like, and I'm so happy to announce that this video is being sponsored by Big Cartel or with the Universal Yarn one. They sponsored that video like ten videos ago, something like that, where I started working on that mohair sweater and I showed you guys the yarn that they gave me, I said, this video is being sponsored by da, 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 da. So yeah, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have no reason to lie. I'll tell y'all what's up. Um, yeah, that, that first, um, come yarn shopping with me video where I went to Joann's and hobby was not sponsored. I was simply going cause I had to buy stuff. So I'm telling y'all things I like. Yeah. That's so funny via the seat to see your name pop up. Thank you. I really appreciate you. I was actually going to like record a different video today and I wanted to actually like bring you up and just say that my followers, my subscribers freaking have my back. Like I don't know, it made me laugh. Like it made me actually really happy that before I could even get to the comment because I've been working and editing all morning before I could even see the comment. You were already there like, mm -mm, no, I got you girl. Mm, fishy comment. I don't like it it's so supportive. Like you guys really fight for me. Like if there's something off or weird and I just really, I'm so loud right now. I just really appreciate that. I want to say I was actually really touched that I didn't have to like sit there and defend myself and defend myself to other people. Like before I have a chance to say anything, you were already there to be like, no, I think if this was sponsored, Aaron would have said it right. And you're right. So yeah, I appreciate you. I really do. Oh, it's a Godzilla dinosaur. That's cool. That's cute. Like a little stuffed Godzilla. That's really cute. Christina, you said, what does Jordan sell? Jordan has a Squarespace website where he shows all of his photography. Uh, my boyfriend, our anniversary is coming up. But um, Jordan has been a full-time photographer for two or three years now something like that. I think two years now. He started doing photography years, years, years ago, but it wasn't until a year or two ago that he started doing it full time. 
So um, if you guys like want to go check out his website, I'll just tag his name here. You guys can go to his Instagram and then click on his website link from his Instagram bio. But he, on his website, he literally just has a bunch of different tabs with different types of photography that he does. Um, I actually, sorry, I just burped. I actually meant to hang up one of his photos right here because this wall is so empty. Um, we just haven't done it yet, but this wall needs something. Oh, y'all, look at Millie. She's growing. She's so happy. I'm so glad that she's like healthy. Yeah, anyways, um, he's constantly upgrading his website, constantly adding things to it, spiffing it up, moving things around taking away photos, adding new ones. But yeah, he does, um, I want to say like fine art photography. He does a lot of portraits and boudoir stuff. He also does scenic nature shots, city shots. He likes to do a lot of lifestyle stuff, which is like what he helps me shoot. So if I'm like modeling a, a product or a sweater or an accessory, that's considered lifestyle. Um, so yeah, he does photography and it's so cool. I this is another video coming out really soon. Another video that I am just finished editing, I think yesterday. But one of my subscribers booked a photo shoot with Jordan. So we got to drive out to meet her and he got to shoot. It was like a couple's shoot with her boyfriend. So cool. I actually got to meet in person a subscriber. So cool. It was so fun. Um, usually, like when I go along, like on photo shoots, like I've, I've helped him shoot uh, weddings before because he needed like a second shooter. I'm physically like recording and shooting. Like I'm using my camera to capture images as well as him. But for this one, he didn't like really need help. He just needed help like directing the couple. So I didn't really do much. I kind of just like stood there and like cheered them on. But it was really cool getting to meet somebody. Um, oh, Amara, that's so sweet of you. Thank you for, for listing my information. Carl, you're such a good mod. I really appreciate that. I'm like over here just chatting and you're like doing all the work down there. Yeah, guys, um, if you guys see Amara M560, that is my moderator. Say hi to her. Give her some love. She's been helping me run all these freaking live streams. She's the backbone, but she's gone ahead and tagged my Instagram. If you guys want to head over there just to see like what I'm working on, um, my Twitch. I'm disappointed in myself. I won't get into it. All I can say is I'm lagging on Twitch. I did think about going on Twitch instead of doing this YouTube live stream. And then I was like, well, I have like my whole thing set up right now for recording. So I didn't want to have to like hook things up and change around. So I came on YouTube instead. But yes, she is my mod like everywhere. And thank you for linking my big cartel shop as well. Ooh, India. Hi, India. Hi, Netherlands. Canada, Philippines, Ohio. Whoa, these are crazy. So many places. Texas, hi from Texas. Oh, if you're still here, if you just left, I'm sorry. Bye, hi, and bye. Thank you for tuning in. Blessing Amir. I remember that name. Hi. Oh my gosh, I need to catch up on this. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so slow at reading your comments. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. I'm I'm just going to take... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's just coffee, my dude. It's my son. He likes coffee, too. <laughs> um, okay, let me, like, try to do, like, rapid, rapid, rapid live chat readings. You stay. Your papa's not home yet. You stay. Delaney Rose, you said your favorite hook was your great grandma's. Yeah, my great, no, my aunt bought me my first crochet hook ever. But then once I started going to my grandma's house and being like, oh, hey, look what I got into when I was in like fifth grade, she ended up giving me my second hook. And I'm pretty sure that second hook was also a five millimeter. So I guess that's why it's like my go-to, like in all my tutorials, because I'm just so used to using it. Like I can just work my way. That looked so inappropriate. Looked like I was playing a flute or a fiddle or something else, but I can literally like work my way around a five millimeter with my eyes closed because it's just like ingrained in me. Yes, Amara, old patterns can be so beautiful and inspiring. Something else that I found when I was going through my grandma's basket of stuff, it was so cool. I think it was my great grandma that did this. 
actually, I'm not sure, but um, one of them literally tore out a page from some magazine. And I can't even find out like where it's from. I need to contact my grandma to find out like the information if she knows where she got it from, because it's literally this folded up, crumpled up, really aged one sheet, one piece of paper from a magazine. But it's this super gorgeous, like vintage, I guess you could say vintage, um, like blouse. And it has like a little bit of a V-neck here in the front, but there are like two little ties here so you can tie it up together and it's not as revealing. And it's like a short sleeve blouse. And the whole thing is knitted in the photo. And I can only see half of the pattern like written or typed out on the page, but it is actually so gorgeous. It's definitely something I would wear. I don't know. I die. I, I, you'll see it in the video that I recorded. I literally showed it to the screen, but it's actually such a cute top. And I don't know if I'd be able to recreate it. I'm sure somewhere on Ravel, Ravelry that there are new updated patterns that look very similar to that. So maybe when I post that video, if you guys see a pattern similar to that, you can DM it to me, comment, comment it to me because I really want to remake it. But it's crazy. Like it's, it's so cool seeing old fashion patterns come in and out of cycle. Like, you know, you guys have seen fashion with the bell bottom pants, the high rise jeans, scrunchies, you know, those things were huge back in the eighties and the nineties. Mom jeans were huge in the nineties. And then they got really old and what people society claimed as like not up to date, not hip, not cute. And then all of a sudden, you know, 20, 30 years later, high rise pants back in fashion, scrunchies, everybody's wearing scrunchies and cloth clips. Like it's so cool seeing things come back into fashion. And it's like, I don't even mean for that to be me. But when I pulled that little slip out of the basket, I knew that this, well, I don't know about that sheet of paper, but all this stuff that was in the basket has to be at least, at least 40 to 60, if not 70 years old. I don't even know if they're making crochet magazines back then, but at least like the 80s. So this top, this knitted top that I saw a photo of, so cute. And it's from the 80s, but it's literally something I would wear like without hesitation. I just don't know how to make it. I don't know how to knit something like that. So when the video goes out, hopefully you guys can like link me some really similar things. Or if somebody's like really dedicated, y'all can like go on the hunt and find out what magazine it's from and help me get the pattern. That'd be really cool. Kuf, Kufre? Kufri Kufre Sunday. You made a crochet beanie watching my YouTube channel. That's so cool. Yeah. This, this headband that I'm working on right now and the crochet beanie, really, really simple patterns. Um, all you really have to do is make a rectangle and then you sew it together. So I'm really glad you were able to make it. Maddie. Hi, Maddie from Kazakhstan. Wow. Christina, hello from Kentucky. Hmm. Julie, you said, hi. Do you have any tips on choosing colors for a bigger project? What time is it? Okay, we're almost at an hour. Do you have any tips on choosing colors for a bigger project? I want to crochet a sweater, but I can't decide on a color scheme. Usually, most times when I have like an idea of like a sweater or a beanie or a scarf or a blanket, something I have in mind that I want to make, I already have an idea of at least one color that I want to use. A lot of times if I'm not recording a video, for me, it's either going to be black. I don't typically use black because it's really hard to pick up on camera, but there is black, standard white or gray. Those three colors, great together. I'm also a really big fan of earth tones. I like really olive green colors forest green colors, some kind of tan or sand shade or khaki, those and like a beige or even like a cream color, those colors would look so beautiful together. I actually want to do something like that now, but there's usually one or two colors that I have in mind. And if you don't really know what you want to make, I would just say, go to Michael's, go to Joanne's, literally go to the yarn aisle. And I've done this before, but I will pick out like the one shade that I know for sure that I want to use. And I'll literally hold it and like walk around and see what other colors look really good with it. And more often than not, you are going to find multiple colors that you can use. Um, I know we probably don't have the same taste like 
there's so many different kind of sweaters you can make. You saw me make that huge rainbow one. That's literally every color in the world there. Um, at the same time, like I just said, I would really love to make now a sweater using like uh, olive green, deep forest green, some kind of khaki sand shade and like a light creamy beige color. Those would be so gorgeous together. And that's only like four shades. At the same time, you can only, you can only um, do like some kind of heather gray, charcoal gray and a white, endless. But a good tip for starting out is if you have at least one color in mind, hold that one up, literally compare it to other colors on the shelf. You can also search through Instagram and try to see different colorways that people have made and hopefully that will spark something with you. Greetings from Germany. Wow, hello. California says hello to you. That's so cool that you're tuning in. I'm sorry, I'm like making these like little bird sounds. I'm embarrassing myself. Georgia, you said, I'm thinking of starting your crochet shorts and I was wondering how much yarn you used for it. Crochet shorts, if I can remember correctly, I used Karen Simply Soft. And I used just over one skein. So I had to buy two. Obviously I used up the whole first skein and I didn't even get, I want to see I used barely 20% of the second skein. So that's roughly for a, well, a 27 or 20 inch size waist and a pretty booty short style. Um, I think my hips at the time of that video, I think my hips were like 33 inches wide. So if we kind of like take those measurements, I used, let's say a skein and a half of the Karen Simply Soft. So hopefully that helps you kind of gauge how much you need. I did also, um, you know what, I had a commission for the crochet booty shorts probably like three months ago and I bought, I had a leftover skein from the project that I made and then I bought one other one. So even for a size large, I believe her waist was a 33 or a 34 inch waist and then hips are a little bit bigger. And even for like a size medium or large, I'm not really sure what you guys would consider that. Even for that, I only used, I used less than two skeins. I think that was only like a skein and a half. So I would say definitely probably only two skeins and you'll have leftover yarn. Monica, you said, how much do you crochet? I'm trying to learn right now. Hmm. How do I put this? When I, okay, I'm gonna make it too complicated. On the average, I would say I crochet almost every single day. And I would say on the average again, probably four hours of crochet a day, give or take some. Um, how am I trying to put this? I can go a couple days because I have to do other things besides crochet. You know, I edit photos. I have to spend a lot of time doing PR email stuff. Um, and then just like living my own life, hanging out with Jordan, getting errands done, doing laundry, you guys get the drill. But there are certain days where I can go three or four days without crocheting, without touching a hook. I don't touch a project. And then other times, if there is a project that I am either dying to get done to meet a deadline, or I'm really excited just to finish it for myself, like my crochet sweaters and stuff, I can work every day for two weeks straight on one project five, six hours a day. There have been days where I have worked 10 hours straight crocheting and that's all I did. So it kind of depends really. I want to say recently I have crocheted once a day for about two hours. I want to say for like the last week I have a different commission thing, uh, a Christmas vest that I'm working on. And I would say I spend, I have worked on it once a day for only about two hours. And then I go back to editing and hanging out and stuff like that. But yeah, there it, it kind of varies. Um, trust me, there, there are definitely weeks where I crochet every single day for eight hours at a pop. It, it really just depends how motivated you are and how excited you are to finish a piece. But uh, Monica, if you're trying to learn crochet, I do have a Crochet Basics 101 on my channel and a Crochet 102. So if you just want to learn really, really, really slow paced, 
um, stitches. I got you covered. They're like the most basic stitches you could use. I'm literally using a half double crochet for this headband. Easiest stitches. So if you're trying to learn, go check out those videos. I move really slow and I zoom in really close so you can really understand how I'm doing it. Via, Vea, I'm sorry, you can correct me. I think it's Vea, but Vea, thank you. You said, yes, girl, I got you. <laughs> you literally made my day. Like I was, I was like laying here scrolling through comments and I was busting up because it's like, I didn't even have time to reply and freaking had my back. It's so funny. Wait, uh, Christina, your comment, you said, ooh, cool. Yes, I want to see. I don't remember what I was talking about. You want to see what? I'm sorry, clarify so I can help you out. <laughs> Monica, you said, do you have any tips? I'm assuming for crochet. My works are always too tight. Okay. Hmm. Y'all, if you just saw my foot and you screenshotted that, you're disgusting. Why are you guys getting feet pics? Um, Monica, when I first started crocheting when I was younger, I used to have the problem of crocheting too tight. I don't really know how to verbalize any kind of tips and tricks for crocheting too tight. Um, one, I would just say over time, like when I made my very first project ever with my aunt, it was way too tight. My tension was so extreme. I was gripping everything really, really hard. And, you know, my work came out really, really scrunched. I couldn't even see my stitches. Since you guys can see the back of my hand, I know I hold my hook a little bit different from people. So this is the, the pen hold. I'm holding it kind of like a pencil. But here, when I'm crocheting, I loop my yarn over my index. And then I just lay my other fingers over like that. So I'm not like gripping it like this and having to like pull on the yarn. I just lay it in between my fingers and I kind of just pinch my two fingers together, just barely. So, you know, I rest, I'm like talking so loud and so fast. I'm sorry. I'll take a minute. It's the coffee. I'm sorry. But yeah, just to kind of clarify for you, I just rest the yarn over my finger and I just gently rest my other fingers. But as I'm working, this is kind of just the technique I go with when I'm like looping and stuff. I do pull the yarn back just a little bit because I'm gripping so loose that I don't want the yarn to slip out of my fingers. So when you see like my hand moving, I'll kind of use these fingers to, to hold the yarn back from slipping out of my hand. But it's really kind of just this motion. You see the yarn is literally just sitting behind these three fingers and resting on top of that index finger. But that's that's just how my tension is. I would say, I would say now my tension is very average. It's not super loose and it's not super tight. If I get carried away, like if I'm not focusing, I will crochet with a pretty tight tension, but I've gotten really, really good at being conscious about how I'm gripping my yarn. Um, I would say a good a, a good tip and something that I've caught myself doing, and I even almost did it with this, is your tension really begins with your starting chain. So when I made the starting chain for this one, it's really easy to make your tension too tight because all you're doing is creating, you know, like a, a tiny like little chain. And if you're holding onto that yarn, you see like how I'm gripping onto it, it's really easy to pull on that yarn and make your chain really, really tight. So whenever I make starting chains, I will, let's see if I can show you. And this is how my projects end up turning out with a really good tension throughout the whole thing because my starting chain is not tight. So now when I make my chains, I'll like pull up and I'm not even gripping it here. I'll make my chains so darn loose Oops, well, see, it almost fell out. But can you kind of see how this chain is like a lot looser and it's not as tight as that previous one? I would say when you're making a starting chain, really, really be loose handed with it. And then once you start working your first row and your second row, your stitches, like your tension will fall into place with where your chain is. So like I said, if you have a really, really tight chain, you're gonna have to work 
each stitch into a super tight little loop. And then as you work more rows and your tension starts to even out, you're going to have a really tight first row and then your work is going to like loosen up. But if that first starting chain, if you work it really loose and you're barely gripping the yarn and you work it really loose, wherever, you know, you're placing your stitches after that, it's going to evenly space it out for you versus you having to like dig into that chain and work your stitches. Um, yeah, that's something I've, I've found. I still do that a lot with my projects. Um, there's been times where I've made crop tops here on my channel and my starting chain is like a little bit too tight. So you'll see as I work more rows, the third and the fourth row look a lot looser than that initial one. Like it almost looks like it's kind of bowing out a little bit. And that's because your starting chain was too darn tight. So yeah, I don't know, a, a little tip. That's just something that helps to regulate my whole pattern. If I start out with a very loose chain, my whole work, the tension looks very even. And it also forces you to work looser throughout your project versus if you start out with a really tight little chain, you have to work that density for the whole project. So I hope that made sense, but yes, thank you 560. Thank you Amara for linking Jordan's website. Just so you guys can get a look again. You don't have to go with Big Cartel. It's just what I use because I'm physically listing pro um, like items to sell versus Jordan. He's he has things on his website. I think still he has portraits, um, frames listed for sale. But a lot of his stuff is more, excuse me, photography is like a visual thing. So for him, having the freedom with Squarespace to like literally drag and drop his photos, stretch it to the size he wants, move things around and literally have like a mosaic kind of layout, that's really important for him. Um, so he's willing to pay the money, more money for Squarespace versus me. It's not super important for me to have a crazy website layout. I really like simplicity. I literally just want one item next to each other. Boom, boom, boom. Clean, cut, dry. So yeah. Franca, why are you calling me out? Why are you coming for me like that? It's freaking rude. Franca said like so much for the crochet with me. No, it's okay. I totally get it. This this happens every time. You guys act like you're surprised. I always start off my live streams crocheting. And then I think it's just I see the live chat like going crazy. Like I, I just see a bunch of questions and stuff and I don't want to like ignore you guys. So I like end up putting my project down and not talking. You know what? Okay. Franca, you got to call me out like that. I'll add another row. I was really indecisive, but if I don't like it, like somebody said, I can just frog my work. Do you like the silence as we crochet together? I know everybody else is like, damn girl, why'd you have to say that? Now she's not talking. <laughs> Let's see if I can read some and crochet at the same time. Amara just changed to to just chatting and coffee. I mean, maybe that's what I should be doing. Hello. See, I'm almost working this row a little bit too tight because I set it down for so long. But yeah, can you can you kind of just watch my the back of my hand and see how loose? I'm gripping this yarn. I'm not even really gripping it. You see, it's just flowing. See that? See my back fingers? It's just kind of flowing through my fingers. There's not really any tension on it. I'm just holding the yarn just enough that it doesn't fall out of my hand. So yeah. Sunshine, you said, hi, Erin, how are you? I'm doing well, I need a little bit more coffee. I'm a little parched, but I'm well. You said, what is your opinion? Oh, what is your opinion on selling crochet items on Etsy? So I can't talk too much on this because I personally have never sold on Etsy. So I don't wanna be biased and tell you to do it or not to do it. Um, 
I know a lot of people use Etsy and it's a very well-known marketplace. A lot of times people I've talked to, um, I'd say 50% of the people I have in person mentioned, oh, I sell my things on Big Cartel. They have never heard of Big Cartel and they have to kind of be like, wait, what is that? Versus you say, oh, I, I have an Etsy account or I sell my thing on Etsy. They know exactly what you're talking about. So that's kind of a plus side to Etsy. Um, I asked around a lot before I made my online website because I wasn't sure where to list my items. And I talked to a handful of other creatives and it was actually one, no, there's two people who actually recommended Big Cartel to me. I didn't really find them myself. They were recommended to me. Um, but other creative people who were selling their items and stuff, they did have an Etsy. And from what they tell me and from what I've read online, Etsy does, um, what's the term for it? They do charge more. So I don't even know if you know how much their monthly subscription is to have an Etsy account. But on top of that standard price, Etsy does take a percentage. Uh, what What is it called? Like an, not an order percentage, but it's like the, they take like a buyer's percentage. So every time somebody buys something from you, Etsy taxes you, I believe. I don't really know the term for this, but this is what I've heard. So this is why I chose not to go with them. Not only is there like a, uh, yeah, they also have something called a listing fee. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I know like eBay, for example, um, a while ago for like separate things other than crochet, I was looking into like selling just like some personal stuff of mine on Etsy or on eBay, excuse me. But in order for you, even Craigslist, keep in mind, a lot of different websites. If you even want to just list an item, a product for sale, literally have just the listing up, you have to pay a listing fee. So think about it like this. Say you pay $10 a month for your monthly subscription to Etsy. Again, these are all made up numbers. I don't know. If you want to list an item on other websites like Craigslist or eBay, there's a listing fee. So if you want to list a car for sale, if you want to list a box of yarn that you're trying to sell, you have to pay a percentage. It's like a dollar or 50 cents or $2 to list the item, even just for people to look at it. So that's two things I liked about Big Cartel that they didn't do. Um, again, I don't know for sure if Etsy charges a listing fee, but there is, what is it called? I see it every time an order is placed. It's just like a seller's fee. Like Etsy, Etsy, Etsy just um, takes a bigger percentage than Big Cartel does. And that's why I went with Big Cartel. I was trying to save money. Um, I wasn't even sure, you know, how many things I'd be able to list and stuff. And I didn't want to be blowing a lot of money, losing a lot of money on Etsy. So that's why a lot of people recommended Big Cartel to me. Um, I think it's just like called like a commission. But yeah, Big Cartel does not take a commission. They don't tax you. So when an order is placed on your website, Big Cartel doesn't take anything from you. Whatever you are listing your item at, say you're trying to sell something for $20, when somebody pays, places the order for that item, you get the full $20. There's not like $20 minus 10% for Etsy, you know, this is, which is what they do. So yeah, I feel like I don't know any of the terminology. I'm sure other creatives on here, you guys know what I'm talking about. So maybe you can like tell her what I'm trying to say. I don't know the words. Okay, yeah, I'm liking this one extra row. We're going with it. Hospital girl in effect. Ah. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. Every time I like scroll to read something, it like runs away. Smurfy, hi from Melbourne. That's so cool. Hi. I've only just started crocheting this year and been loving your videos for inspo. Hope you are well today. Yes, I am very well. I need some water, but I don't want to get up because look at the boy. Look at him. He's snoozing. He's waiting for his papa to get home. 
that's really cool that you're watching me from so far away. I'm glad that my videos could help inspire you. Um, I don't even think I mentioned this before. Oh my gosh, there's so many things I want to tell you guys. But um, I don't think it's published yet, but a couple weeks ago, somebody from Bricks Magazine, have you guys heard of Bricks Magazine? Somebody reached out and wanted to do like a little article on me. So I got to answer some questions and I'm pretty sure really soon here, I'm going to have like a little, a little published section about me. So that's really cool. But um, what was I going to say? Was I going to relate to that? That was just something really cool that happened. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, but a question that she asked too was just about like having an online community. And that was something that I mentioned in the article was that when I first got back into crochet in like the fourth or the fifth grade, you guys, like way back then, you know, like what is, how many years is that? Like 18 years? YouTube, I'm sure YouTube was around, but it wasn't nearly as big as it is now. Even like eight or 10 years ago, there weren't that many crochet videos. There weren't, weren't that many tutorials. Um, and I think even if there were, it was a lot of out of date fashion versus now. I think part of what prompted me to start my own YouTube channel was that I had been seeing a handful of really cool helpful YouTube videos and it just inspired me same thing I would go on Instagram and I would see so much crochet and knitting fashion all over Instagram and I think being able I mean at a certain point there is like a limit but I think what am I trying to say I'm getting tired here um spam phone call but I think just having like this influx I think social media really helped me to spark my creativity because, you know, scrolling through search pages and stuff, there's just so many different people out there who make so many different things. It really just sparks my creativity. And that's something I didn't have before. Again, like fourth, fifth grade, I feel like the only tutorials out there, I'm sure, you know, there were a couple, but it was really just like scarf, you know, basic stitches and how to make a scarf or maybe how to make a beanie um, or a blanket. But there was never really, you know, like how to make a crop top. That didn't really exist back when I first started. So for a long time, I wasn't really creative with my crochet. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, and then just over the last two years, it's gotten so big on social media. I'm sorry, I'm like spacing out here. It's just gotten so big on social media that being able to see other people and their creations, it leads me to create something else. And that could either start from the drape of something or the silhouette of something. Um, the color palette that they chose, I've seen somebody who like made like a dress or something or a handbag with like certain colors. And I was like, oh, a sweater with those colors would look cool. And then it, it like prompts you to wanna make something else or even just coming down to like the kind of yarn that they use there's been a lot of times where I've been scrolling through and I didn't really care about like the item that they made. Like it didn't really speak to me. Like say it was like a handbag or a sweater or a scarf. I'm not really big on scarves, but there's been like a lot of scarves that I've seen and the pattern that they use, like the stitches that they use, I was like, oh my gosh, that would be really cute in a crop top. That would be really cute in a sweater. And then it makes you want to do something else. Or again, if you're scrolling and you see a scarf and you're like, I don't care about the scarf but that yarn is gorgeous. Like think about how many people are going to see this ball of yarn and want to make something else with it. Like that's that's what's so cool again. It's like, I didn't have something like this when I first started. There wasn't, there was no such thing that I ever saw as people doing a yarn haul or a yarn review. That wasn't big in 2002, you know? So yeah, I might be using this, I'm like so itchy right now. I might be using this yarn to make a headband, but how many of you guys out there are gonna see this yarn and be like, oh my God, I wanna make a sweater in that, or I wanna knit a bralette with that, or that'd be so cool to make socks with, or I wanna make a whole sweater with this. Like think about just how many different things you can create with just one type of yarn, or how many different things you can make with a stitch pattern, you know, it's, it's really cool. I'm like tangenting now, but that's kind of like why I, I like, I love hearing that. Like I inspire you guys because I feel like 
if I had had like YouTube and like all these other creators that are big now, you know, with crochet and stuff, oh my God, I'm like so itchy. If, if you, yeah, if I just had all this at my disposal when I was in eighth grade or even seventh grade, I feel like my crochet style and journey and experience would be so much more evolved and like so much bigger and better than it is now. Um, yeah, for so many years because I didn't really see anything that sparked me. I didn't even really know that you could make crop tops and sweaters. Like I'm sure I saw some, but I was like, oh, those are ugly. Like I, I don't want to recreate that. So it kind of like turned me off to it. But you see one really cute cardigan or one really cute pullover sweater. And all of a sudden you're like, I have to make that. And I just like being able to, to do that for you guys. So yeah, I, from the time that I learned up until about five years ago, I had only ever made baby blankets, scarves, and barely even beanies. Those were the two things that I made for 12, 13 years of my crochet journey. I shit you guys not. I made a bunch of baby blankets for people in the past in high school and in college because it was just a big square. Easy enough, big square, get it done fast. Same thing with um, scarves. My mom works at a hospital and every year around the winter time and stuff, they do hold like a, like a donation thing where you can donate handmade things to the, uh, the chemo patients in the hospital because they get cold when they're getting their chemotherapy. So they want to wear like scarves and beanies. So I would make dozens of scarves. I wasn't even that good at making beanies at the time, but I would make a bunch of scarves, just big rectangles with cool patterns in them, you know, and then I would donate that to them. And that's all I made for years. I never even made a crochet crop top until two years ago. That's not even a joke. Never. In all the years I've been crocheting. So it's like for so long, I think I was just so uninspired. I didn't care to make anything. And now just seeing the power of just one person's post or one person's video, it literally sparks you. Like it this is literally what moved me. I don't I couldn't tell you like the first video that I saw that really moved me, but um it was right at the beginning right before the shmandemic where I started noticing um, a lot of crochet videos and fashion, just a lot of fashion in general. So I started like Googling on YouTube, I'm like, oh my God, that's cute. And I keep scrolling and I type in something different, like, oh, um, just, I don't know. I don't know. Just like different definitions of crop top or different styles of crop tops and stuff like that. And like the more I scrolled, I was like, oh my God, that's cute. Oh my God, that's so cute. Oh my God, that yarn that she's using. Wait, what is that? I don't I don't care about the crop top, but that yarn is gorgeous. And then you just start, like you go into this, this like rabbit hole of fiber work and you just get like sucked in. And that's just what happened to me. Like, again, a long time, I was just scarves and blankets, y'all. Scarves and blankets. All throughout high school, I was crocheting scarves and blankets. And it's crazy. I never even thought to myself, like, you should make a crop top. That's crazy. But now, now it's, it's, it's insane. Like, in about two years, three years time, my fashion sense with crochet has evolved so much. It's so cool. It's so cool seeing what you can make. And, yeah, that's a, just a very long story about why I like making these videos and why it, like, Tickles me pink to hear y'all say that I like inspired you guys to do something. So yeah. Makaya, hi. You said fun fact, if you make your rectangle attaching it to a magic circle, it makes it easier to close. Yeah, I was, um, because I'm going for a certain kind of headband, I'm not just going to be attaching it like that. So if I was just doing like a regular headband, I would be working in the round, um, but because I am going to actually make this into, um, I'm gonna have it crisscross in the front. So I need to actually stitch it differently to make the crisscross, which is why I'm just making like a big rectangle. But yeah, if you guys, that's a good tip. If you guys wanna make a headband and you just want it to be literally just like this all the way around, just crochet in a circle, just magic loop it. 
Russia, hi. Margaret, you said, hi, Erin. I want to make the bikini set, but I can't get it right. Do you have a written pattern for it? I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I don't have any written patterns. Um, as for the bikini bottoms, I do have that tutorial posted. So I walk you through all the basic steps of how to essentially size your bikini bottom to your crotch. I hate to say it, but crotch. And then how to make the shape of the bikini bottom. So I do have a whole tutorial of that on my channel. And I do have the instructions written on the screen as well. As for the bikini top, I actually, I thought about this the other day. Uh, I never put out a bikini top tutorial, but if you're wondering, the bikini top tutorial is the exact same steps as that blue cami crop top bralette that I put out. It's like a blue crop bralette tutorial. Use the, that is exactly the same exact pattern as making a bikini top. You're just using thinner yarn or a different kind of yarn. So I technically, I do have two patterns for that, um, but they're videos, they're not written. <clears throat> Knit Stitch. Hi, recently found your channel. Would you be willing to test patterns? I'm trying to start my own store. I'm just scared people won't understand my patterns. Yeah, I'm totally down. Um, that's definitely something easy enough to do because I don't really have to like film and edit a whole thing for you guys. So that's definitely something I can work on behind the scenes in my own time. If you guys have patterns that you're trying to write up and stuff, um, as long as it's not like a whole freaking like blanket, I'm totally down to test it out and help you guys out and like give you guys like little tweaks on it. That'd be really cool. It's all quiet, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> Annabelle, you said, what's your TikTok? Your girl don't have one. I'm sorry. I don't use TikTok. I don't watch TikTok. I use Instagram. So, you know, if people like screen record a TikTok on TikTok and then post it on Instagram, I'll see it. But I don't, I don't make TikToks. I don't, um, I don't watch TikTok. I don't even know how to say it. I don't watch them. There, I, I've seen a couple funny ones. Um, you know, that were like reposted on Instagram. I think for me, it, it, I just, you're probably going to hate me for this, but I just feel like a, like too old. I, I like Instagram because it's slow paced, you know, like I can scroll and like videos or I don't know. I, I've seen a couple TikToks that they're just so fast paced. Like there's so many cuts and like angle changes and there's just like a lot of like like it's so fast for me. I can't. I just can't. I'm sorry. I don't have a TikTok. I'm sorry. Sorry. Sonia, you said I love how you hold your hook because that's the way that I do too. It's funny. I never thought, sorry, I never thought that how I hold my hook is different or weird. I honestly thought this is how everybody holds it because this is how... My aunt holds it, and this is how she taught me. And at the same time, this is how my grandma holds it, and my grandma taught my aunt. So, but yeah, I just hold it like a pencil, and I work like this. I'm just feels good. I I have tried to knife knife hold. Oh, my tension is so bad. I can't I can't do the knife hold. I can't I can't do it. I'm sorry, but it's cool. Twinsies, what's up? Sorry guys, I'm just reading. I'm probably gonna get going pretty soon here. It's been an hour and a half. And y'all, my throat is dry. It's just dry like the Sahara Desert. It's crazy, I've had so many people here for so long. Thank you for being entertained by me. I think it's a compliment. Buppy boy, look at him, look at him. Mm. Mm. Love that kid. Look at that face, he's mad dogging me right now.
I'm sorry, I'm just reading these things in silence. Oh my gosh, just when I thought I cut up on all the messages, the thing scrolled up like 50 new live chats. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, here we go. Somebody commented, I think, about Etsy. For me on Etsy, it's 20 cents per listing and it's every month. See, so you they do charge you some kind of percentage to list an item. Thank you for clarifying that because I really didn't know. It's just all from what I've heard from different people who have had Etsy. So it's kind of like by word of mouth. Knit Stitch, you said, Aaron, what, what's your thoughts on Craftsy? Craftsy is that online, what do they call it? It's like an online learning center, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen the ads all over YouTube, right? Right, it's like that, how does, <laughs> that's crazy. I think I know the music, Craftsy. I see that. I can see that ad all the time. I've never used Craftsy. I've never clicked on the link. I don't really know what it's about. Um, I'm sure it's probably very similar to Skillshare in the sense of they have different creators who post videos teaching you how to do things and you take like an online course, like an online class. I'm assuming it's like that. I've never done it, but in case y'all didn't know, I don't think I ever announced it, but um, there is a website called Creative Fabrica, Creative Fabrica with an A at the end. And they're really similar to Skillshare in the sense of it's a online learning community where they've got different content creators who make different videos and they teach classes and courses on how to do a bunch of different things from crochet to knitting to embroidery to ceramics to, you get the idea. Um, but they actually, uh, hired me how many months back um, to make a couple videos for them. So I kind of have like my own like little online course kind of thing. But yeah, it's called uh, Creative Fabrica. I only have one video up there so far. I am currently working on the second video that they commissioned me for. So that's really cool. Um, I think it's like really similar to Craftsy, but Creative Fabrica, I believe, is a Swedish I hope, I hope that's right. I hope I didn't just mess that up, but, um, you guys can go check it out. I literally have a video up there, but oh my gosh, I'm pretty sure it's a Swedish. I cannot believe I'm blanking on this. It's been a minute. But yeah, they're, um, they're from Europe. They're a European online community. So really cool. Haley, you said I've been working on two sweaters, a Christmas cap, and a single crochet under by 100 stitch bandana that your coworker wants to buy. I'd say today, work on the simplest, quickest one to finish. I'm going to say, forget about the two sweaters because it's already so late. In the, I mean, it's four o'clock, but I would say. Do the bandana for the coworker and get that out the way because that seems pretty fast and easy. And then you can really like sit down and dedicate time for the sweaters. That's what I'm gonna say. Oh my God, Jaden, you said Etsy does have a lot of fees. I think something I sold for $30 and they took $5 out, not including shipping. I could never. See, that's it makes it so hard for creators like that, like to actually like get what they're worth because we're making things handmade from scratch. One person, you get the idea. And then Etsy took $5. They literally almost took 20% of what you sold. That's so bad. I, I feel for you. That's so bad. That's, that's why I like big cartel. Um, and granted guys, keep in mind that if you're selling things online, if you are a, even if you're not a small business owner, if you sell things online, you have to report that to your taxes. Y'all, we're not committing tax fraud. That's not cool. I'm not going to have the IRS come for me. No way, no how, no ma'am. So whenever you sell things, when you get ready for taxes and stuff, because you're a freelancer, a small business owner, whatever, you may have it. How do I put this? 
the state still has not collected taxes on what you sold. So with me, with Big Cartel, and this goes for even Etsy, even though they're already getting charged, when you go to do your taxes, you have to report how much revenue you earned. And then the state still has to take taxes on that. So say you earn $1,000 the whole year on your website or whatever, and you report that. The tax, state taxes are going to still tax the $1,000 that you earned because all that revenue, you earned it. They, there's no tax deduction. So again, taxes, they're going to take, what, between 10 and 20% of that revenue that you earned. And then you have to pay that at the end of the year. So it's like, those are things I was trying to keep in mind when I was creating my online shop is that on top of knowing that at the end of the year, there's going to be surprise taxes, guess how much you have to pay? On top of all that, I didn't want to be charged, you know, the extra five bucks every time I somebody bought something for me. You know, I, I was trying to save as much as I can because it's a small business. You, you got to save where you can. So, yeah, guys, keep in mind, if you are starting a small business, just because people are placing orders and you're seeing all this money coming in, that's really, really good. But keep in mind, you can't forget that as a small business owner, a freelancer, whatever, you may have it. If you don't want to get caught by the IRS, you have to submit all of your earnings from your website, from Venmo, from PayPal, you know, however you're selling things, you have to report how much income revenue you had. And then you still have to pay taxes on that. So if I'm having all these orders placed and I'm seeing all this money come in, that's really cool. Good. But keep in mind, you still have taxes to pay. So, um, yeah, that's why I like Big Cartel because there's no listing fee. There's no commission fee. Um, it's literally one flat rate from Big Cartel. So if, um, those of you who have bought from me or if you guys have been looking to buy from me, whenever an order is placed, you'll see the item that I had listed, say it was $40. Then there is the shipping fee, $5. And then there's always going to be like, a, I don't know, like a $2 fee or depending how much, I, I don't know percentage, but there's always like a little per, uh, percentage. And that's what I like about Big Cartel is that they charge the buyer, not the seller. So Etsy, see, they're taking that $5. That person sold something for $30. They took the $5 out from the seller. So they took the seller's revenue versus Big Cartel will charge that $2 or $3 to the buyer. So I get to keep everything and then the little extra tax stuff, they charge the buyer, not you. So you're keeping everything that way when it comes to doing taxes, you save money. You feel me? Okay. Pro tips, helping y'all out here. Cat Green, did you choose how you hold your crochet hook or is it how you naturally hold it? I would say it's how I naturally hold it. I'm, I'm sure when I was learning, my aunt told me, okay, so hold it in your hands like this. Or she might have been like, all right, hold the hook. What feels comfortable? You know, I don't really remember. But to me, this feels very natural. This is how I hold a pen. I actually hold a pen like this when I'm writing. But I don't crochet like that. I crochet like that. But it just feels comfortable to me. I, I probably chose... And it was natural. Blind Stitches Creations. I remember you from some of my other live streams. Hi, if you can hear me. Um, you were talking about starting your own business. And you said, do you have any recommendations or any tips to start your own small business? Um, if you go ahead and search around on my channel, I want to say three videos ago or four videos ago, I think three, I did post a small business 101 video. So go ahead and search for that. Just maybe um, voice command or type in it's Aaron B small business and it is a small business 101. I give like a whole rundown on just the tips and tricks that I used when I started my recommendations, how to price things, how to ship things. Um, yeah, just a bunch of information. So go ahead and check that out. If I didn't answer your question there, you can send me another message. Yes. Somebody said you should make a balaclava. Am I saying that right? Balaclava. Or a balaclava. Balaclava. 
I've seen some really ugly ones and I've seen some really freaking cool ones. And I'm just going to say this now. I, I want to make one. I've thought about making one. But y'all, be real with me. If I look like hospital girl, if I look like like head bandages with this on, how do y'all think I'm going to look with a balaclava? Am I a joke to you? Ah, she said, it's so sad that most of the videos seem to be American and the yarn is not accessible here. The yarns are kind of different too, so it's hard to find similar yarns or finding good substitutes. I don't know if you're talking about my channel or just YouTube in general. I'm assuming that most of the videos seem to be American because, well, one, yarn is very accessible in America, at least around these parts here in California. So... I'm sure kind of nationwide yarn is a plenty and easy to come by, which is why so many Americans or American themed channels have started a crochet page because it's accessible to them and it's easy for them to get their hands on. So, you know, why not make it their hobby? I mean, sadly, same thing goes for me. I, I am an American. I live here in California. So when I go out to the store, all the yarns that I see are like American yarns and you know, that's just what's accessible. I have shopped at hobby.com before. They are, what are they? I, Denmark? Swedish? I don't remember, but I've shopped there before. So I have bought yarns from other countries before. I bought yarn from Europe. Um, I bought yarn from South America, you know, all over. So, you know, it's not just American. I do try to use different yarns when I can, but it's just kind of naturally what happens, you know, um, uh, you're going to use your surroundings. I'm an American. So sadly, you know, I'm going to use things in my hometown stores that are easy to come by. And that means American stuff, but there are a ton of, I think South American channels. I've found so many different channels before searching for patterns and I couldn't, I think they said either Peruvian or where were they from? maybe Brazil. But I've seen a ton of different, um, oh my gosh, who just did that? I've seen a ton of different nationalities, ethnicities on YouTube before. Um, I couldn't even follow the directions because it was in a completely different language and the subtitles were not in English. So, you know, if you search around, I'll find it. still <laughs> Welcome home. Hey. Mowgli, don't you dare. Don't you good dare. Boy. No, man. That's no, a good no, no, no. Boy. <laughs> what happened? Did you hey guys. No, I'm probably gonna sign off soon. It's been so long. Yeah. Mowgli! 75 people in here? Mowgli. Mowgli. It's because you came home. Yeah. Mowgli. Yeah. Mowgli. Mowgli. Somebody just commented the dog sleeping in the back is everything. And now he's like a week. Uh he, he was, was here for the he whole was video. Right now? Yeah, with his face in the video the whole time. Oh, shit. See, now that his pop is me, he just wants to play. <laughs> mm. Mm. This is cool. This is the yarn. Did he did he fart? I think. I don't know. It smells, right? No. This is the other yarn that Universal Yarn sent me. Cool. I'm hoping that if I, because I'm done with this now, I'm hoping if I have enough, I might make the other one for your mom. It's pretty, huh? Who's this one for? Me? It's for the thing I'm recording. <laughs> she said it's mine. <laughs> well, I was telling them earlier, I actually planned on making this and giving this one to your mom, but then as I started working it up, I was like, mm. I was like, I kind of want to keep it for myself. But I think there's enough to make her one. She would wear this. My mom? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You paused for a second. I was like, oh, no, that's not good. No. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like. I mean, yeah. What do you mean, I mean? She, she doesn't really like pink. I, but my mom doesn't either. Who's going to wear it? It's not, isn't it cute? It's cool. It's very unique. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna do the crisscross thing in the front again with that X. Yeah. What? Because what is this stuff? Baby it's alpaca like, and wool. I know, but it's like copper. Yeah. Copper and purple? Yeah. 
You know who would like that? I know you don't want to like that. And I have these colors. Dang. Yeah, her favorite color is purple. I would like to make her something. I'm trying to make every, I still haven't, I still haven't made your mom anything. I haven't made my mom anything. I kind of get, got to get those done first. Yeah. I can't show up on Christmas with no gifts for my mom. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, it I haven't eaten since you left. Oh my gosh. Babe, yeah. come here. <laughs> I'm going to sign off right now because I'm getting some weird spam. Whoa. Inappropriate. Don't appreciate that here. Portugal! Hitler was right? <laughs> hey, don't say that. I can get flagged. Oh, really? Can, yeah, don't say so. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you are crazy. Not you, this person. How do I? How do I? There we go. Who in the world do you think you are? You are insane, sir. I don't appreciate comments like that. Yeah, stop spamming, please. It's cool. I mean, y'all want to spam. You're just giving my video more attention. That's cool. I don't care. Bye-bye. We don't support that. Nakaya. Oh, I'm sorry I did this so late. Did I remove the right person? Thank you for the super chat. I'm looking. Oh, I got you. Ew, no, I don't have OnlyFans. I know you're a bot saying that. I would never. That's not for me. If y'all have one before, cool for you. Not for me. Who do these people think they are? Like you just want attention when you're spamming like that? Like you're just desperate for attention? I don't understand. That sucks that you feel that way. Are you not getting attention in your life? Y'all are crazy. Don't appreciate that. Who do you think you are? See, it's people like you that like ruin it, Harvey, for like everybody else. Who do you think you are? It's sad that like that's that's what you have to do for fun in your free time is like ask girls about OnlyFans. Why don't you go on a date like in your own real life? I don't mean to be mean, but it's like, why are you bothering me? I'm not going to go on a date with you. I'm not going to. If I had an OnlyFans, I wouldn't give it to you. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, I think I got rid of all this fam. crazy i like how it just says message deleted and then i see like the cool messages in between what are some projects to make with wool yarn i'm gonna say beanie off the bat beanie balaclava your daughter is a lefty any advice on how to teach her crochet there are a bunch of lefty crochet tutorials um i can't remember the names of them but there are a couple creators who always post tutorials right-handed and then left-handed version. So just search for like left-hand version crochet stuff. I've never crocheted left-handed, so I don't know how to help you there. I like how everybody is re reporting Harvey Price. That's so funny because <laughs> I just did it too. <laughs> I'm disgusting. Literally everybody. <laughs> Hey, Laura. I haven't seen your name in so long. Hi, hi, hi. Everybody cheering because Harvey got reported. That's so funny. Okay, guys. I actually haven't had lunch today, so I'm probably going to get going. I'm sorry. Uh, Phineas. I have two mods. I'm sure they just signed off and had to go, but I always have a mod. It's cool that that happened. I don't mind. People get kicked. I'll kick them. I don't care. But yeah, usually Amara is. I think I might have missed her message. She usually signs off and says goodbye, so that's okay. 
Yeah, Knit Stitch. Um, yeah, you asked earlier if I'm down to test your pattern. Just send me a DM on Instagram or email me and I can help. I'm willing to help. All right, y'all. I'm going to get going. Thank you guys so much, though, for coming. I appreciate you guys asking me a bunch of questions and chatting with me and making your girl laugh. Thank you. Hmm. Vea, you said, sorry, you have to deal with all of this. Shake my head. I know you're going to end it soon. So I wanted to say thanks for all the advice and how super down to earth you are. Glad to have made your day. I appreciate that, girl. And now I'm always going to recognize your name because you're always going to bring a smile to my face. All right, guys, I'm going to get going. But thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to miss y'all. Uh, oh, I'm reporting more people. <laughs> In. Oh, I'm just doing this. I'm hopping off right now, but I'm just going to report more people because I can. All right. Love y'all. Stay tuned for more stuff coming out soon. I'm working on like four different videos right now. Help me. But yeah, cute, easy Christmas gift idea tutorial. Working on it right now. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs>